And welcome, everybody here in Twitch chats and everybody on YouTube for some Bant value. First time trying this out without Oko in the metagame. Let's kind of bring it back because there's just a lot of fun cards to play in this deck, a lot of fun stuff to do, and so that's what we're going to be trying to do. Why this deck is called Bant value is because it's built around value creatures. Uh, for those of y'all that are newer to MTG, a value creature is like a creature that has an enter the battlefield effect. <clears throat> so it gains immediate value for you whenever it enters the battlefield. Um, it could also be a creature that um, also has an effect that the longer it's out on the battlefield can just generate value over time as well. So it's like one of those kind of one of those two things, and that's what this deck is really built around. Because besides um, besides questing beast, basically everything else in here is going to be a value creature. Um, of course, we have the charming princes that help us help start it off. This is a huge part of our deck. You know, it has the flicker effects. Since we have so many creatures with ETB effects, we get to flicker them. But then plus we can play this on turn two to scry to help set up our draws and help help us curve out. <clears throat> we have like the Risen Reef part of our deck with a couple elementals. And by a couple, I mean it. And I guess we have a Cavalier of Dawn as well. So we don't have a whole lot of elementals, but... You know, Risen Reef's just a, a good solid card on its own, especially when you get to pair multiple of them together. Whoa, that's weird. Um, <clears throat> of course, we have Spark Double that can copy the Risen Reef or copy any of our stuff, including legendary creatures and make them non-legendary. One thing to do with all these um, Enter the Battlefield effects is we have these Prime Speaker of Anifar and a Neoform that allow us to... Uh, kind of move up the chain and everything. You know, we can sack Risen Reef and turn it into Elite Guard Mage or sack Elite Guard Mage and turn it into Chu Lane. That's right, we're playing two Chu Lane. This is just the best value card in the deck. Each creature that you cast, if you if you don't know Chu Lane too well, each creature you cast, a, you get to draw a card and then put a land from your hand onto the battlefield. So you may realize that that's just the card Growth Spiral. Growth Spiral is a, is a really good standard card. Uh, two mana card and so every single creature that you you cast just has growth spiral attached to it so that's obviously very powerful um we also have god eternal oketra so each creature that we cast comes along with a four four so if we have an oketra and a two lane in play whenever we just play any creature we get a four four vigilant token and we get to grow spiral <laughs> so that's pretty silly and that can that can really um uh that can really add up. Um, but then, yeah, we got a great hinge. Obviously, our kind of our way to really win games is like, you know, get Agent of Treacheries in play. Uh, you know, kind of work our way up the chain to get to Agent of Treachery and steal some stuff. Um, but yeah, two lane plus the great hinge. That's pretty awesome. Um, and yeah, you know, we get to put the lands onto the battlefield and not even, not tapped, you know, untapped. So, you know, we can just kind of make, get some more land drops. So we can play more creatures and draw more cards, get more land drops. Pretty awesome stuff going on here. Sideboard, I have a giant killer for the gruel matchups. Like basically if my opponent's playing Questing Beast, I'm gonna be sideboarding in Giant Killer. So we can have the chop down part, but then also besides that, just be a one drop to do stuff. Um Lav Lavinia, of course, against fires. Um This is also good against Wilderness Reclamation, though Lavinia is very easy to kill. So that's kind of the problem, is it's very easy for those decks to kill Lavinia, but I just kind of had a 14 sideboard cards that I wanted to play, and I decided to throw one in um, in the 15th for the 15th slot. I don't. The problem with with Lavinia in this deck is I don't have a way for Vanifar to go search for Lavinia because I have no one drops. So I could play. I could just play Giant Killer whenever I bring in Lavinia, and it, and honestly, against like the the Jeskai fires that are playing like all the Cavaliers, Giant Killer is going to be good against those Cavaliers anyway. So we could just bring in both of these, and then I can sack Giant Killer and go find Lavinia. Against control decks, we got some Vivians in here, so we can give our we can get some more card advantage. Also, give our creatures uh, flash, which is pretty valuable. Extra deputies, so we we can go up to four deputies. If deputies is going to be good against our opponent, plus four Knight of Autumn, same thing. Uh, when Knight of Autumns are very good, a second Tulsimer for some small creature decks, some fighting. Another Agent of Treachery and Great Henge when we want to go big. And against smaller creature decks, we got three Voracious Hydras for some fights. All right, let's play through a league. We're going to play a league here, play till we win five or lose two, whatever happens first. Here we go. We got 
some bant value. Perfect. Let's start with the Tranquil Cove. And we'll have the Scry 2 part of Charming Prince be able to help set up our next turns. Ooh, that's a good one. Let's look for like a Risen Reef. For turn 3. I don't really need another land right now. We'll find more land. I do have a good amount of lands in this deck. I have 26. Because we need to hit our land drops because we have an expensive curve. It does make it so... Putting uh, putting lands to the bottom like that's easier. I should just play the Blossoming Sands, by the way. Naismith! I played the wrong land. Naismith with a sub. Thank you so much there, Naismith. Welcome back for four awesome months. Thank you very much. That's going to be sub number 13 today. Wrong number. There we go. Oh, I didn't... Yeah, I didn't change the stream information. You're right. I didn't change it back. Forgot to do that. Thank you, thank you. All right. Changed it. I think I'm supposed to deputy, like, a Johnny's Pride Mate and, you know, the big flying vampire. I don't think I really deputy these things. Hey, Daniac. Hello, hello. All right, come on. Let me untap with Tulane. Whoa, Tulane has a sweet animation. Did Tulane always have that cool animation? Probably. All right, there's the card that we need to deputize. You can't have a kitty cat that big. Yeah, we're going to have to arrest those kitties. Put them in kitty jail, or they just get all the pets. They definitely deserve all the pets. Because they're good kitties. Boom, 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 boom. Hmm. What could Charming Prince do? I don't know. Let's, let's do this first, I guess. One's a lot of life. So I can go like Risen Reef, Neoform the Risen Reef into a Spark Double and Spark Double the two lanes so we can have double two lane out. Well, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Just one sided wrath. Well, let's see what we got.
I don't think I really have a way to win this from here. Ow. Ow. Basically, I got to just stay alive for a, a turn. That Johnny was devastating. Hmm. I'm thinking I want this Vivian that can give my creatures reach and stuff like that. So what if we play more deputies? Right, let's give this a try. Yeah, against fires, Disdainful Stroke's the best counter spell against fires because it counters all the Cavaliers and it counters fires. All right, pretty similar hand. Well, I'm not sure about pretty similar hand. Just the, our first turn, we got Charming Prince again. This time we're scrying four lands instead of scrying lands away, though. All right, we'll take that land. Got to keep their life total a little bit in check. Just letting them get up to 35. Probably not where I want to be. Gideon. Let me lead the charge into darkness. All right, I'll let you. Share in my light. Do I need a second blue? Not really, right? Yeah, Lavinia's in the sideboard for fly for fires. Um, can also be good against Reclamation. That's like untapping the lands and trying to cast a huge explosion. You can't cast a large enough explosion. You know, you can't really do a large explosion with that card in play. Um... So they could chop with the aerialist to keep it alive for a turn, and I could attack with the, the charming prince also to make sure that that dies. 
that is just kind of sacrificing the Charming Prince. Dawn of Hope. Alright, so this is or will you be using the giant killer to get rid of the aerialist here? But we'll be chopping it down. That's pretty graphic, chop down. Why would you use the one blue source? What are you doing, auto tap? So I, I could have shocked, I, mean, I guess I could have just done this pre-combat. I just don't really like shocking. I guess I'm doing it now. I was, I was just going to tap that to be able to play Giant Killer. That was my plan. Alright, so we, what do we want to do? There's nothing like super great for us to get here. You know, let's start with you. Let's draw a card. Let's see what we get. Okay. Didn't really help. Well, dang. All right, we got the lands. I don't even know. If, I don't even know if we have basics left to go find. We got one. So this other one's not going to do anything now. All right, we got to be out of lands here pretty soon. Three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 
Hmm. That's an annoying one. All right, law mage. Sack law mage, go get a five drop. Which five drop do we want to get? Probably Oketra. We can start making a bunch of four fours. That seems pretty good. I guess I didn't really check to see if we had lethal, if I would have just attacked my opponent. You know, I could tap their creature with a giant killer. All right, so we saw some more enchantments this time. Yeah, I could have played just a giant hydra. I like to just going wider and drawing more cards and stuff. But yeah, a giant hydra was certainly on the on the table as an option. All right, two knights in play. All right, we got turn two Paradise Druid. That's a good turn two play. Celebrant. Alright. I would like to actually just like find two lands here that we put to the bottom. Alright, that's that's still good too. So each creature that ETBs for them, they gain a life. Each one that dies, they gain another life and I lose a life. I'm glad we've gotten this extra four damage in with the Paradise Druid. I wouldn't, I mean, I wouldn't love them blocking any of these times, but I'm glad that we've just been able to get the damage in. This is a combo. So, you know, we're a combo deck. We turn their thing into an artifact, and then we destroy an artifact. Combo deck. Yeah, Sultai did well. It was a rough start for Sultai, but ended very well. <laughs> yeah, we're playing Oketra and Creatures. More combos.
I wanted to use a Voracious Hydra before the Cavalier of Dawn, because I wanted to use it before they were able to... Like, before, like, these creatures got too big for Voracious Hydra. Uh-oh. Because, yeah, at least the primate, we could just have all of our creatures on the ground kind of team up for it. The aerialist in the air. Realist. Is more of a problem. Trigger, trigger. Obviously, I could have Night of Autumn destroy the pacifism, but I kind of feel like we could maybe destroy something better. Oh no, not another area list. Third one. I only had answers for two. Uh, Cavalier. I killed an area list with the Hydra and with the Cavalier also. But they have yet another one. I don't believe I'm muted, no. I seek a path to peace. What am I supposed to do about that? Friendship feeds the soul. Oh, this isn't good. This isn't good. This is not good. Risen Reef doesn't do anything here except for make another 4-4. But, you know, it does, it does that. It makes a 4-4. And you know, just draws it just draws me the next card anyway, and we have enough mana. Oh, they're letting the Ajani die. Wow. All right, that's good, that's good. And now I just gotta be able to deal with this aerialist somehow. Draw another Risen Reef? Nope. Yeah, Charming Prince to be able to flicker Cavalier of Dawn would be really nice for sure.
I don't love this attack. Obviously, the Cruel Celebrant, I have to watch out for my life total also. Because they can just, you know, make blocks that just kill all their creatures. So I have to gain life also. The problem with attacking with the Cavalier last turn is that turns off Charming Prince. You know, like I can't, I couldn't, I couldn't risk the Cavalier of Dawn dying because of Charming Prince being it and out. Maybe better just to take the Cruel Celebrant from here. No. Thought about just taking the Cruel Celebrant. That's a good one. I don't... Yeah, I guess that's not good enough, though, right? Because, yeah, Celebrant can only be... No, it is whenever Celebrant or another thing dies. But they can't... They just can't get the Ajani's Pride Mate to die. To do the last five points of damage. Well, that was a close one. I think I think the real big thing was that, you know, us killing the Ajani. I think if they could have kept the Ajani alive somehow, that would have been pretty tough for us. That was a big thing there. You don't need to be mean, sensational. No, because, like, they could have dealt four damage with celebrant with all this stuff dying but they couldn't really get their 15 15 to die all right i like our hand here just cry with Charming Prince, then play Risen Reef, and help ramp to the five drops. You can flicker Risen Reef as well. Ooh, looks like Mono Blue counter your stuff. If we can get the five drops in play, they are cast triggers. Obviously, the really difficult part is going to be to get them in play, though. Yeah, so yeah, celebrant triggers with tokens. But they had they had four tokens and a 1515. And I was at 5. So you know, like the 
the four creatures, they could let all those die. That's four triggers. They couldn't really let the 15-15 die, though. All right, time to start dropping five drops next turn. Let's see if one ever... See if one ever resolves. We're going to start with the Cavalier of Dawn. Ooh, they're going to Aether Gust the Risen Reef in response. Put it back on top so I have to shuffle it away. Hey, Kieran, I don't, I don't have any special plans for Christmas. Just, you know, normal streaming and everything like that. But no, I don't have anything special planned. Yeah, this whole time mid-range deck is up on YouTube. Yes. Um, and you can also find the list there as well. <laughs> Better not have mystical dispute for the last card. It's my only 4-drop that trades with a 5-4. Well, that's game. Hey, good job, Yu-Gi-Oh. Good job. Congratulations. All right, they got me. Good hand. Good hand. Um... I don't think they're playing artifacts or enchantments. Time to cut this curve down. The Grey Henge is weird. It's like, it's obviously really expensive, and we can only cast it in, in, if we already have like an expensive card in play. But it's so good if it's in play. I think we just get rid of it though. I like these cards.
All right, I guess I'll take out a two lane. Take out another five drop. And then a Charming Prince as well. All right, we'll give it a try. Um, Vanifar or Oketra to put back. I guess it's Oketra, because just math-wise. Oketra would probably be better to resolve, though. I don't know. Vanifar would be very good to resolve, too. Turn all these things into awesome cards. Alright, scry for the lands. Gotta find those lands. Well, there we go. Unfortunately, I don't get to play anything the next turn because that's temple. Yeah, Vanifar could, could certainly get countered as well. It's kind of a risk of which one to keep. Alright, I'm glad they didn't have the 2 1. Certainly expect them to have a counter spell. I mean, they, they definitely do. Yeah, we could have scribed the forest to be the top card, and then I would have had Voracious Hydra, but then I would have had nothing the next turn. Thanks, Valentino. I mean, they're just debating on which counter spell to use, would be my assumption. We need two more mana to be able to double spell with Resident Reef and Voracious Hydra. <laughs> Just have all lands in hand. Maybe they do. Ugh. Now Voracious Hydra is going to cost more mana to kill the Spectral Sailor. So now we're not one one land away from double spelling. We're not winning this race as much anymore. Hopeful control. Why would they do that after it resolves?
and I get the trigger to redraw it. Why not just do that while it's on the stack? And then I don't get the trigger. I feel like that didn't really help them out. Yeah, light side, I am enjoying the post Oko metagame. So maybe they don't have counter spells if they just let all that happen. Ooh, no counter spell. Make a 4 4. No bouncy my 4-4, please. They could have another Brazen Bouncer. Why do they call it that? Why is it not Brazen Bouncer? You don't borrow anything. You bounce stuff. That's what it should be, the Brazen Bouncer. That's just a f more fun name to say, too. Brazen Bouncer than Brazen Borrower. Bouncer, more fun to say than borrower. Don't they didn't just bounce the token? Yeah, it's real name Brazen Buc Buccaneer. That's what I called it for the first few days. I kept the first few days of the format. I kept on calling it Brazen Buccaneer. Also, would have been a better name. Uh, this is a the chop down's an instant. Do, do, do. I was hoping they were gonna. Uh, I was hoping they were gonna like draw a card or play the brazen bouncer. Do something where I could have Hydra fight. All right, I don't even want that card anymore. I need a land for Hydra to fight Terramander. Yeah, my opponent isn't using their Aether Gust very well. Instead of targeting those things while they're on the stack, they're letting me get the triggers. Yeah, that's the plan. Just tap it down. So obviously I could tap it down again right here. Attack for four. 
What's up, Waticus? I think I kind of prefer prefer tapping on their turn though. They could have had like a bounce spell for my four four, and then untap hit me for five. And I'm in a kind of a rough spot. Like you know, if their last their last card was a bounce spell. So we're just going to tap it down, make sure we're not taking five. And then we still get to just attack the next turn. Computer doesn't like that. I tried to update the sub goal. Okay. Yeah, Oketra, I kind of agree with that statement. I said Oketra is the most powerful card that sees no play right now. I agree with that. Oketra is super powerful. What's up, Photon? Also resubbing here, second month. Thank you so much there, Photon. Yeah, my my computer's been extra extra bad because it knows that I'm get that I ordered a new computer and it's on the way. Part of it's arrived already, and so my computer is being extra bad now. This giant killer's been sweet. Great sideboard choice. By me, thank you, Todd. I agree. That was a great sideboard choice. The giant killer. <clears throat> this giant killer, it just cost one mana, and we got a 4-4 a four, four Vigilance with a 1-2 that's been tapping down this 5-5. Five, five. What's the deal with that? A couple one ones. Hmm. That card's cool. Not necessarily good, but cool. All right, can we get game three on the draw? This is definitely going to be a very difficult game for us. Uh, one that we're, we're certainly not favored whatsoever. But you never know. That's why we play the games. Maybe they have no counters, or maybe they have no creatures. Or no lands. We got the 33% rule. We need them to have no of one of those things. So 33% of the time, it'll work every time. All right, looks like they got lands. So we just need them to have no creatures or no counter spells. Oh, 
Ooh, looking like no counter spells. Let it resolve. Yeah, maybe they'll have no lands, no creatures, and no counters. Yeah, I'll be I'll just be doing that in my spare time. Pine peace. Um, Risen Reef? If I knew Neoform was going to resolve, I would love to cast it. I'll, you know, but it's Neoform is just kind of too risky to pl to play right now. I can't really risk Neoform getting countered cuz you have to sacrifice the creature as well, of course. Not eight. It's not great. Hmm. All right, they had a bunch of lands and counter spells and creatures. We were defeated. All right, one and one. Yeah, yeah womp womp. Those three power flash creatures hit too hard. Our deck's very good at generating value. It's not very good with interacting with the opponent, admittedly. <laughs> Thanks, Valentina. We got 26 lands in here, and we're on the draw. So I figured we'd probably draw some lands. You know, we got Resin Reef on three. Hopefully that hits a land into Chulane on four. 
If it doesn't, we just neoform away the Risen Reef and go grab like an elite guard mage, gain three life, draw another card. Oh no, one mana Risen Reef. My Risen Reef costs three times as much. Okay. So we have... Heck yeah, we're, we're keeping it. All right, time to tell some tales. Julane. What? Main deck Noxious Grasp? In this metagame? Don't they know that all the green cards got banned? Hmm. I don't want my other two lane to die, and it, it seems pretty obvious that my opponent's just holding up removal spells. And so it's kind of too risky for me to play the spark double on that, even though I'd like to. It's, it's too risky just playing spark double with one creature in play, because if they do have removal spell, they just kill your one creature. And that's quite bad. Alright, so now even if they have removal spells, we'll be able to draw a lot of cards. And now we're getting good two life a turn. Man, I would love if they tap out here. Just play the Murderous Rider. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Tap out. They should definitely tap out. Love it. All right, now we get to two lane and spark double the two lane. Sacrifices must be made from time to time. We're probably not going to draw two more lands, but it's possible. Oh, maybe we were. Maybe I should have shocked. Uh, this is what we call two lane. That's what we got in play right now. Oh, come on. What is this? Wait, that's not even going to kill my stuff.
Because whenever another, ma whenever a creature dies this turn, oh, uh, they could have sacked their Masker Girl to kill my my creatures. Sweet. Uh, we are going to get so much value, though. <laughs> More like cool Ain. So that was awesome. This seems like a good The Great Henge matchup. Good Tulsimer, not good Knight of Autumn, good Giant Killer, good Agent of Treachery. Whatever, Har Harmonious Archon. Deputy of Detention does not seem good here. We'll play Voracious Hydra instead. It's pretty easy for them to kill Deputy of Detention. So far, so good. <laughs> Speaking of shame conceding, I just had an opponent cast a Ravnica at war on an empty board. Duress. <laughs> oh. Called it. What is that? That card is at peak. Isn't that a card? Peak? From like Odyssey? Yeah. You instant look at target player's hand. Oh, it, it does have look at target player's hand, draw a card. Never mind, they don't get to draw a card. Peak minus draw a card. I guess I could have played it. I could have played. Um, the Hallowed Fountain that they knew about. And then they wouldn't have such a fountain of evidence. A hollowed mountain of evidence of what the cards in my hand were. They're just casting Murderous Rider. Just casting it just like that. I'm mysterious. Refined. I don't think you'll be needing that. That actually hurts. So, of course, I waited. To, I was going to have seven mana next turn and then drop two lane plus Charming Prince. That hurts. Up in there. Struggling? Good. I don't want them making me to I don't want them making me discard more cards.
What's the chance they don't have removal? Wow. I mean, that's not bad for me. Get rid of their Edgewall Innkeeper. Get them down to just 5 mana. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've ordered the new PC. It's it's on its way. Hmm. I don't like these innkeepers. Draw too many cards. Alright, we got them to use a removal spell. That's good. A removal spell that was not on Chu Lane or Oketra. Alright, they definitely have another removal spell though. But Oketra will we'll be back. We'll be back before you can say Oketra. All right, we got them to empty their hands. Hopefully no removal. Yeah, no removal. Let's go. So now Chulain can bounce stuff. Um, so, you know, I could I could reset Cavalier of Dawn and be able to play that again. Or reset Elite Guard Mage. I think I want to reset Elite Guard Mage because I do have the mana next turn to play Oketra and Elite Guard Mage. No land. What's up, Kearns? They don't like this of Ketra. Don't they realize the two lanes is better? Like, Oketra is just going to keep coming back. It's just going to keep coming back. Jack. Thanks, Current. Thanks that Twitch Prime sub. My my goal to kill them is using their castle Lock Twain. That's my goal for killing them. I mean, I could attack, I suppose.
So many cards. So many cards. Everywhere. Cards everywhere. All these triggers. Having Chu Lei, No Ketra, and the Great Hengen play. So you play a Risen Reef, right? Risen Reef brings a 4 4 into play. It's two. It's a 2 2. You also get to draw a card, put a land into play if you have one. And then you get to draw another card with the Great Henge, and you get your Risen Reef trigger that, you know, draws a card where if it's a land, you put it into play. So for three mana, you get a 2-2, two, two, a 4-4, four, four, uh, draw two cards, and the, the whole Risen Reef trigger, which is just better than draw a card. And you can also put a land from your hand into play. All of that for three mana. Crazy. Crazy value here. Where do, you, where do you think we got all this gold with our dragon whelp? All that value. I like it. I like opponent putting up a fight. So I get to do this. Oh yeah, and yeah, we gained the two life with the Great Henge. That's true too. No, don't concede. Let me have another turn. No, we're going to play so many things and it's going to be so good. We're going to draw so many cards. Yeah, we could agent treachery wrinkle, but that's that's not the fun line. We're at millions of life. We didn't have to win that turn. We could have just drawn tons and tons of cards. Hey, Hawkeye, how you doing? All right, two and one. Where'd you go? You come up here. You want to say hi to everybody? There's Hawkeye. Yeah, welcome to Value Town. Yeah, I think I think Hawkeye still kind of has this cold that he, you know, he had for like like a week ago, but then he started get, he got over it it seemed like. But since getting back home, he seems like his cold is a little worse. And so I so I talked to the vet today. And the first first time they had getting getting him in was is Tuesday, so Couldn't get him in immediately. But he's going to see. He's got like a little bit of a runny nose. He just got a cold. So I called today. You know, I saw his like runny nose. And I was like, all right, I'm, I'll try to go get you some, some cat medicine. He's purring, though. He's doing good. So normally I'd want to gain three, but I got a scry because I got nothing coming up here. All right, I like the Risen Reef. And I think I like the Neoform too. The problem is, is like Neoform is going to be good later. <clears throat> The problem is that Neoform, it's not a land, and ideally we would hit a land drop so that we can go straight into Tulsimer the next turn. So even though I do like that Neoform, I think I'm just going to go for the high upside, putting it down to the bottom and trying to hit a land here. Hey, Blue Jin. Yeah. Oh, Tulsimer costs double green, and I don't have double green next turn. Yuck. 
I needed that to be a green source, didn't I? Hmm. I could just play Krasis for two. Sure. Oh, hey, Bagas, our, our last game. GG's. Not to brag, but I'm totally the best pyromancy student. Don't worry. I brought company. So we need to draw Basic Forest. That's the card I want to draw here. Ow, ow, ow. Basic Forest. Ugh. You're killing me, Temple. You're killing me. Well, we got to just get our second green source in play. So I guess I'm playing this thing for two. Which isn't great. Hmm. Do I want to keep this? No. All right, have a good night, Storm. No, I was fine with drawing first, then scrying. It wasn't like I needed to draw something that turn because my I was going to be tapped out of mana. Oh, no. Well... I guess I have to deputy that thing now. Okay. We're in trouble. I mean, this isn't bad because... You know, they could have a 3 damage burn spell to kill the deputy, but if they have a 3 damage burn spell to kill the deputy, they would just kill me. So I guess I don't have to be that worried about deputizing the Torbran for its crimes. I mean, just look at that huge axe. Obviously, it's up to no good. <laughs> Mono black control. Sounds good to me. Yeah, this is definitely an I'm in danger. If I don't block, we die to shock. If I do block, the shot kills the deputy. And now... Now fighting Spitfire. The Spitfire is going to do three, so it's going to kill my wolf now. But again, I was I was just dead if I didn't. You know, it was pretty obvious that my opponent had shock, but I was just straight up dead if I didn't block.
Save me, Archon. Save me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, my my opponent could have killed me with these shocks for sure All right, well, the Archon lets us stay alive for another turn. And we got Torbrand out of here. Could have definitely used another creature to go along with this Chew Lane. Oh, come on. Boo. We'd hit another five land drops that our opponent, over our opponent, though. Ugh. All right, so we need this giant killer. I guess more deputies. Usually Archon wouldn't be good, but it, it was good against specifically Torbran. Oh, poor Hawk Hawkeye, he's sniffling back there. So Oketra, Archon, and Great Henge. I probably want to take out some of those. I guess we're only playing one Great Henge. All right, let's give this a try. No, stream didn't start late, but we we spent a lot of time tuning to donation decks. They said, you know, feel free to, to change stuff beforehand. So uh, the second donation deck I just moved to tomorrow. And the, the first league was very long, and so is this one. Standard. Standard, just very slow format. Yeah, the decks that we're playing are very slow decks, too. Bass. We got the fighting fishies over here. The war bass.
Guess we get island. Even though islands are worse land. Things not getting through. So we'll be able to have the giant killer instant speed removal for the Spitfire if it does get bigger. Be able to chop it down. Um, I guess it depends on how long this this league takes, honestly. You know, we're an hour and a half. Right now we're on our in our fourth match. I mean if we play six if we play another hour and a half. <laughs> that's that's basically how how much longer I'll be streaming, so like if this turns into a three hour league. I was kind of hoping they would attack with a whole bunch of stuff. Thinking that the Spitfire was going to do tons of damage to me. Nobody taught them how. I guess if they just drop Torbran, that's gonna that could be a whole lot of damage. All right. Game number three. So that's why we have the questing beast in here. We just got the one because it's just an awesome card at killing the opponent. Usually that's not what our deck's about, killing the opponent, but sometimes it's good to have a, that clock. Harmonious Archon is great whenever your opponent's playing bigger creatures, like when they're playing a bunch of Cavaliers, um, and just more valuable, you know, like bigger creatures, they turn them into 3-3s, three one, or two, if they're not playing creatures, it's awesome there too, because it's just three bodies, if they're not playing creatures, and it can turn your smaller creatures into being 3-3s three also. It's not good when your opponent's playing a lot of small creatures, and you turn their lots of small creatures into 3-3s. Three Unfortunately, we keep playing against opponents that are playing a lot of small creatures.
Well, this was a great hand. <clears throat> Three, two power, one drops. Two of them with haste. That's really good. Just dead. I am. Well, that hand was pretty busted. All right, well, with that defeat, looks like we are going to be moving to mono black. Head. <laughs> I paradise drew it into Night of Autumn, but I was already dead. All right, so we went two and two. Um, our deck kind of did what we were thinking it's going to be doing. You know, we didn't really interact with the opponent very well. Um, didn't really kill opponents very well either. But besides those two things. Got to play an awesome late game, do a lot of fun stuff. Chulane was was a ton of fun. Had some cool animation with Chulane. Agent of Treachery didn't look so good, surprisingly enough. Um, we just you know kept on playing against a lot of aggressive decks. Sideboard could certainly have more against aggressive decks. You know, like I'm not playing anything like Glass Casket, for example. It's a card that could be playing there, or like Time Wipe. Could be another one too. Like if you want to play extra removal, there's definitely options. Um, Lavinia is the worst card in the sideboard. You know, I just wanted to kind of give it a try, but it is the worst card. But playing like those kind of things or playing um, like Dovin's Veto in the sideboard could certainly help out in other matchups as well. So definitely possible that my sideboard's not good enough, you know, that we need more spells like that. But I wanted to keep it really creature heavy. Um, the Giant Killer was awesome. Really liked that card. That, yeah, that card was really, really good. I kind of want to play more Giant Killers. And that's a, just a one drop also. That could just be a one drop that we could play main deck, even. It's a one drop for Vanifar, which is nice. Um... Yeah, probably, Zeke. Yeah, probably. Um, but there we go. Banned value. Tulane, awesome. So those of y'all watching on YouTube, uh, hit that like button. Feel free to leave comments as well. If you're giving the, the deck a try, let me know how it's going there in the comment section. Um, but that's it here for banned value. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.